Hello! Welcome to episode 32 of Art Snaps. This is the talk series that looks at Swindon's collection of modern British art. And I'm Katie. I work as an engagement officer for Swindon Museum and Art Gallery's Art on Tour project, which is all about sharing more of Swindon's art collection with more people and in more places. That includes making these 10 minute talks. And for each episode, I pick a theme and choose three artworks from Swindon's collection to help me explore that theme. At the time of recording, it's Women's History Month, so I'm going to discuss artworks by three groundbreaking female artists, because there's no better time than the present to celebrate the achievements of women who have helped shape British art. I'm going to begin with Gwen John and her exquisite drawing, Portrait of a Lady, from 1910, which depicts her friend Chloe Boughton Lay, who was an artist and a fellow student of John's at the Slade School of Art. It's one of a series of drawings showing Boughton Lay in the same clothes and hairstyle, but from different angles and with different facial expressions. And Swindon's drawing depicts a strong, proud woman with great presence, with an extraordinarily sensitive use of pencil and wash. And pieces like this really show John's ability to capture a lot about the character of a person with so few marks. She was a really talented artist who was working in a key transitional moment in British art history, where for many artists it felt important to move away from a moralistic Victorian tradition and toward a mode of painting which responded to modern life in the 20th century. And the climate was beginning to change for women artists too. It would be a long while before the playing field was equal, and you could argue that it still isn't equal today, but the Slade, which was where Gwen John and Chloe Boughton Lay met, provided a particularly unique environment for female artists in the final years of the 1800s, when John was studying there. Around two thirds of the school students were women, which gave them the opportunity to socialise in a way that female students hadn't been able to before. So there was a context in which they could support one another. And with its focus on drawing as the core skill for an artist, the Slade also allowed women to attend live drawing classes, where other art schools didn't. So John was in a position of being able to learn the skills she needed to become an artist and establish relationships with female colleagues. Unfortunately, she was somewhat eclipsed by the men in her life. She was still working in a time when male artists were able to find success much more easily than their female colleagues. Her brother Augustus John was a big character at the Slade when they were both there and for many years remained in the spotlight. And meanwhile, Gwen John was a much quieter and more reserved character and she lived a very reclusive life. In addition, throughout history, her name's been bound up with that of the famous sculptor Auguste Rodin, who she modelled for and with whom she shared a long and complicated affair. However, recent years have seen more attention paid to her brilliant, intimate portraits of women and quiet interiors. She broke the mould of what was expected of artworks depicting women by taking them away from the male gaze that they were often subjected to and showing the world something much more intimate and honest and filled with psychological presence. And we can see this in Swindon's study of Chloe Boughton Lay. Next up, I want to take a look at Helen Lesseur's studio from 1967. Like Gwen John, Lesseur also studied at the Slade, though she was there a little later than John from about 1924 to 28. And Lesseur was a successful student who showed her talent early on and won numerous prizes during her time there. It's a shame that she isn't more widely known as an artist, but she is perhaps more notable for her work as a gallery director, who had a big influence on mid-century British art. Helen Lesseur OBE was born Helen Brooke in 1907, and she became Helen Lesseur in 1934, when she married Frederick Lesseur, the founder and owner of the Beaux-Arts Gallery, where she had begun working in 1931. When Frederick died in 1951, Helen continued to run the gallery and she really turned it into a space that supported young emerging artists, many of whom would go on to become big names in British art. It was a great hub of contemporary creativity, which championed figurative painting. For example, she gave Leon Kossoff and Frank Auerbach their first solo exhibitions in the 1950s, and they went on to become some of the most prominent names in 20th century British art. 
So Lesseur had a real eye for talent and really supported the artists that she believed in from an early stage in their career. When the Beaux Arts Gallery closed in 1965, Lesseur was able to focus on her own painting once again. Studio from Swindon's collection is a quiet and contemplative painting. Interestingly, it doesn't depict Lesseur's own studio. It was actually her son's studio. John Lesseur was another prominent painter within the Beaux Arts circle and is still active today. Swindon's painting shows his studio at their home in Camberwell after John had moved out. All the pictures in the room were by him, including the snow scene on the easel, and the version in child sculpture is by her late husband, Frederick Lesseur. Helen commented that she decided to paint the studio when it was bathed in light one sunny morning, and it was infused with, in her own words, a new entity. And certainly it should be praised for its incredibly sensitive use of light and colour we really get a sense of light streaming through a window we can't see. And I love the way the golden yellows allow the eye to move around the scene. Formally, it's a really stunning piece of painting. But perhaps against the artist's wishes, it's hard not to read something deeper and more symbolic into the abandoned painting on the easel and the statue of the Madonna and Child, which is the ultimate symbol of divine motherhood. But I'm just speculating, and I think it's up for the viewer to read into these objects. But I think a scene like this does allow us and give us the space to project our own knowledge and experience onto it, as well as being a beautiful painting in itself. The final artist I want to talk about today is Eileen Cooper, who, like Lesseur, also has an OBE. Cooper's work is concerned with the relationships and interactions between people and is deeply rooted in her experience as a woman, as a wife, as a mother and an artist. But she also explores themes that are timeless and universal. So the viewer is always invited to understand and interpret her artworks from their own point of view. Separate Ways from 1991 shows how Cooper draws on a narrative tradition, but also uses it in a very contemporary way to express something that comes from an inner um, emotional and spiritual place. It's a large charcoal drawing depicting a male figure holding a bird in one hand and making a gesture of blessing with the other, and a female figure crossing her arms across herself to hide her body. The motifs and gestures seem to allude to the story of the Garden of Eden, with Eve ashamed by her own nudity as she's expelled from paradise. The bird and blessing also relate to Christian themes, and the swirling form on the ground could be interpreted as a serpent-like creature too. But we don't have to read it as a purely religious scene. The symbolism enhances the narrative element, but at the core of the image is a physical and emotional relationship between two figures who are depicted in Cooper's distinctive style. Her stripped back yet expressive use of line gives the figures a great presence and monumentality. And when you consider that the piece is over one and a half metres high, you can appreciate the impact that they have on our space. With the purchase of this piece in 1994, Swindon Museum and Art Gallery became the first public art collection to own an artwork by Eileen Cooper which is particularly exciting because between 2011 and 2017, Cooper became the first woman to hold the position of the elected keeper of the Royal Academy, since it was founded in 1768. Even though it took a long time, it's significant that when a woman was elected for the job, it was one whose work presents an unapologetically female point of view. And that's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed hearing about these three great artworks from Swindon's collection and the brilliant women who created them. If you want to hear more about the collection, there are 31 more art snaps you can delve into. And you can also visit our blog at www.swindonmuseumandartgallery.org.uk slash art on tour or follow us on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. Thanks for listening. Take care, stay safe and bye for now.